Hello, everyone, everywhere. This is Bob Thibodeau with the Kingdom Crossroads podcast, and you are listening to the Going North podcast with my good friend, Dom Brightman. Be sure to subscribe to his podcast so you will not miss any of the upcoming episodes. And be blessed in all that you do. And today you're going to highlight Real Build for Office known as the Going North podcast where we have ordinary humans doing extraordinary things. And in this case, it's one of those ordinary humans doing extraordinary things, conquering extraordinary obstacles. Because today's special guest, my goodness, we got a lot of special guests, but this one's extra special. It's like a cupcake with five cherries on top because she's a best-selling author, TV reality personality, and lives with multiple rare and chronic diseases, just to name a few, my goodness. Reflex symptomatic dystrophy, Miss... <laughs> Skip that one. Paul Bartu, that's dash V A R, endometriosis and other pain disorders. She's a chronic pain educator, patient advocate, and president of the IPF, the International Pain Foundation. And she triples, if not quintuples, as a motivational speaker on pain topics. And she also has a blog, reality show, TV, as well as media appearances. And she uses those platforms to help. Others to become an e-patient advocate and presents at healthcare conferences, speaking publicly, sharing a story, and educating and advocating for patients across the globe. And she's a decorated superstar because, just to name a couple of her awards, the 2012 WeGo Miss Health, or should I say the 2012 WeGo Health Miss Cogeniality. She's the second on this podcast with that distinct daughter. And in 2017, she was named the Health Information technology top 100 influencer by health scene and even more recent in february 2021 she's listed in the top 75 social media advocates for rare diseases so let's give it up for the super special awesome miss bi herself miss beautiful and intelligent barbie ingle how you doing today barbie hey dom i'm so excited to be here and i want to say congratulations on trying to save those rare diseases that's why they're rare diseases, because most people haven't heard of them, so they don't know how to say them. <laughs> <laughs> but you did a really good try, so thank you so much. <laughs> yes, I'll just I'll just say um, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, microlepsy, and PALV2 variant breast cancer. <laughs> we're wow. the three. We're the three that, that you named off there. So those are hard to say and hard to remember. <laughs> For yes. sure. <laughs> Especially that acronym too. <laughs> right? It took me a little while. That one really threw me for a loop. It's a genetic form of breast cancer. And um, it was, I thought I went through a lot with chronic pain. And then when they say, well, okay, there's this cancer showing up and you have to have this lumpectomy and we're going to go through all this, it, your world stops. So it's definitely um, been a long 20 something years of living with rare diseases and having the time to learn how to have the vocabulary to talk about them. <laughs> oh yeah, I can say that again. It's like, I'm usually the language guy at my day job where we have to announce people's names every now and then, especially when we get those out of US of A, um, non-American names. Yes. And then you see this is like, oh wow, all right, wow, I should have practiced this one. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, I'm usually good at that last old spot. I'm like, oh, crap, wow. You ain't kidding yep. about that rare disease and that vocabulary. My goodness. Absolutely. My goodness. Well, as with all introductions, they're not allowed to be 100 days long, and I probably only covered maybe two days of all of it. So mind <laughs> filling in any cavities I missed about the wonderful Barbie herself? Uh, I think you hit it right, right off the bat. <laughs> um, I do a lot, and I've done a lot, and... Um, I think one of the things that you didn't mention prior to becoming a chronic patient and a rare patient, I was the head coach at Washington State University uh, for the cheerleading and uh, dance team. And that was living my dream. I was taking life for granted and not even paying attention. And then all of a sudden I got hit with some rare diseases and my whole life changed. And God said, being a cheerleader is your purpose, but that's not the way you're supposed to do it. So he sent me on a whole new way. <laughs> wow. Yeah, my goodness. And like, it seems like you've been collecting them and not by choice either. So what do you think was the cause for all of these? Because I know some of them probably were from some malpractice for some crazy folks back in the day. 
uh, yes. a few years ago, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure like it, does, is there any way to find out the cause for some of these? Well, the reflex sympathetic dystrophy, we can say RSD for short. Uh, that one is neuroautoimmune and they believe it's environmental, kind of similar to Lyme disease where you get bit by a tick, something in the environment affected me. It also affects uh, another blood family member as well as um, a stepsister who passed away from complications of it. So um, obviously it's environmental because I wasn't genetically related to my stepsister and um, my uh, other sibling that, that has it, he, he's not public with it, but um, it's something that we all are facing. So environment, probably bad eating, Maybe um, I was born in Thailand. Both of my parents were military. My dad had exposure to Agent Orange. Ooh. So yeah, so um, he had some neurological issues and challenges. So some of it could have come on from that. And the genetic breast cancer, I was the first person in my family to get genetic testing. So um, I don't know if somebody had that prior to me, but the scientists told me to make sure that I tell all the females in my family, which there's only one living female at this point, um, that this is a possibility and that they need to watch out for themselves. So, you know, I, a little bit genetic, a lot of environment, and um, I think circumstances of life. <laughs> wow. Wow. Sorry about the, sorry about your dad being around that age and orange situation. That's definitely rough. Absolutely. Ouch. Thank I you. <laughs> my goodness, my goodness. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that even with all this chronic pain that you've accumulated in your life, you've actually used, transmuted that into power. So what helped you to do that in addition to your faith since you're a fellow believer? Absolutely. Uh, hope. <laughs> <laughs> so faith and hope, two things. Um, also cheerleading. People think cheerleader, ditzy, you know, stuck up, stupid. That's not me. I'm not that kind of cheerleader. They do exist. Uh, but that's not me. When I say cheerleader, I mean someone who's entrepreneurial, a go-getter, someone who is responsible, on time, committed, follows through. When your team is losing 50 to zero, you're still cheering yourself on. You're still cheering your team on. Someone with passion, someone, someone who um, is a, just someone who is a go-getter and a doer in life instead of a human being i'm a human doing and so that's what i try to do i was like i said i was taking life for granted and i was doing a lot of things in life and i was very successful on my career path and um i got shocked into hey you this is not the right way to go this is not the right direction and there's something better for me i didn't know why i didn't understand but I didn't really ask why. I just said, okay, what's my purpose? And picked up and, and kept going and realized that the skills I learned in cheerleading through all the years of practice and, and attending all these games and doing all these activities and appearances was preparing me to be the best person that I could be. And I was taking that for granted. And I needed to stop taking it for granted and start living every moment in life to the fullest it can be whether that means i'm laying in bed using my scooter or up giving a presentation in front of five thousand people uh yes indeed yes indeed uh, definitely a true message that a lot of us can sometimes really forget is the really just be grateful for the small things like being able to get up on your get up in the first thing in the morning out of your bed with your own power like being able to actually move without having to use a walker or a cane or a scooter like just those small things that a lot of folks take for granted it's good that we have that reminder every now and then to really make sure we don't take it for granted right the thing that i one of the things i took for granted was things like doing the laundry <laughs> as soon as i was able to go into remission and and do laundry i remember the first time when my husband came home he was just in shock that whoa what, who is this woman I, I didn't she we got married and i wasn't able to do the laundry i wasn't able to handle the vibrations the noise the moving the clothes from the washing machine to the dryer 
and all of a sudden he comes home and I had the laundry folded and hung and all organized and sorted and reorganized the closets. And he's like, who is this woman? <laughs> so for him, it, I'm getting younger. <laughs> uh, I bet he's extra happy about that one. I think so. I, well, I know so. Definitely. But who takes laundry for granted? I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's right. Don't take doing laundry for granted. One day you might not be able to do it. Right? Another thing, uh, dancing. I mean, I, I, I was able to dance. I love dancing. I love music and, and movement. And all of a sudden, I didn't have that for almost seven years. And I took it for granted. Now it's like, even if I can only dance in my heart, I'm going to dance today. I will find a way. If it's shrugging a shoulder or, you know, doing the Carlton or whatever, I'm going to do something that involves dance and music every day just so that I can get through the day and fill my heart a little bit more. Ah, there we go indeed. There we go indeed. That's right. Definitely got to be grateful and do the magical dance that's within your heart, no matter what it may be indeed. So my goodness, so with not being able to take things for granted, and I believe you also have this wonderful system or this wonderful analogy of seeing like really like with i guess like with time we have a certain amount of time in the day but in addition to time you have these wonderful tokens that you call energy pennies i do so time they say time is money <laughs> for me energy is money energy is what gets me through the day a normal person you don't have to think about how many energy pennies are in your bank it's just replenish, it's full. You just go, 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 go. For me, I get 12 pennies a day and I have to choose how I'm going to spend my 12 energy pennies. And you know, getting up out of the bed is a penny, getting into the bathroom, brushing my teeth, brushing my hair. If I have to take a shower that day, which I hate, to, showers feel like a thousand needles. Every drop of water feels like a needle poking me. So I don't like to take a shower, but as humans, that's like part of our tasks in life is to be mindful of our well-being and part of that is showering or bathing uh, so that's going to take three or four pennies just to do that so i have to make sure that i time my days out don't get too sweaty don't do too much so that i have enough time in between showers to use the rest of my energy pennies to get all the things i want done I also learned to not spend them wastefully. You know, if I have an event or a family gathering this weekend, I might try to save up a few pennies, but it's going to take saving up pennies before that event. And then it's going to take all my pennies at the event. And then it's going to take me one day to a week to refill my, my pennies to get back to having 12 a day and, and being able to live in my new normal. So, but you, everything that requires energy for me is how many pennies is this going to require? What do I have to do to make sure that I have enough energy, energy pennies to get through this activity? Oh, yeah. That's right, indeed. And, and you can't how... buy them. <laughs> you can't <laughs> buy energy pennies. It's like you can't buy time, you know? So. Oh, yeah. Definitely can say that again. It's so darn true. And I guess what helped you to find your max? Was it after a cup, a few months? It was like, okay, so I got 12 every day. Sometimes it may be six if I spent all 12 the following day. What was the discovery process like for that? Uh, I pushed my boundaries. <laughs> As a go-getter, I would try things and then I would be down for days. And I would say, okay, remember how much it took to do that. Uh, I also, for about three years, kept a daily journal. Everything I did on that day, I wrote down in the journal. When I took my medications, when I did my stretching, any PT, anything I did that took a shower, whatever I did that day, I, t I kept track. And it helped me see patterns, figure it out, and then know, okay, this is how many pennies this is going to cost me. And this is where I want to spend them. This is what's important in life. And these are the things that can go by the wayside, like vacuuming. I don't vacuum anymore. It takes too many energy pennies and it will knock me down for days. It's not worth it to vacuum as often as I was vacuuming. Now it's like once every three months and, or if there's a spill or something like that, then we obviously clean it up. But 
I, I try to like not wear the shoes in the house. And well, I try actually to not wear shoes anywhere I go. Um, <laughs> if I had to have shoes on, I wear flip flops because they're easy on, easy off. And um, I'd rather not have things on my feet. But um, I try not to have shoes in the house or have other people wear shoes in the house. So it doesn't track mud or dirt or any little pebbles or anything in from the outside. And, and um, just things like that that people take for granted. Once again, I took for granted and uh, just cut those out of life. So that's the, sh the one of the reality shows I did was called Extreme Time Cheaters, which when we signed up, it was extreme time savers and then they thought cheaters was more sexy and would sell more <laughs> um <laughs> and we had already signed contracts we couldn't get out of it uh we already got a paycheck so um when we did that show we highlighted some of the things that we do to save time effort and energy so that we could live more life oh yeah that's <laughs> right there you off there yeah that's so right. <laughs> Well, that's good that you're able to find that discovery and really just the power of journaling. And you yes. remain popular to this day, which is freaking amazing. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, Thank indeed. you. <laughs> it is. It's it's something like I grew up, I had a learning disability, severe learning disability. Um, I, I didn't get my first A in school until fourth grade. I still have the report card to be like, I earned an A once in my life. <laughs> um <laughs> I had my elementary school principal tell me I would never graduate high school, let alone get into a college. Um, and he apologized and ended up graduating in four years from college. So <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you think I can't do it? Let me show you. I just have to find a different way to do it, but I will find a way. And, um, you know, those are like the life lessons that I learned so early. And, and they stuck with me, and that's what helped me live with chronic rare diseases, is, is not giving up. And when they say, you can't do this, saying, okay, watch me. Well, you sit there and you think I can't, watch me do it. And I might have to do it a different way. I might have to find a way or invent a way, but I will find a way. Whatever boulder is put before me, I will find a way over, under, through, or around anybody can we just have to have the will and, and the want to do that ah there we go indeed definitely the will <laughs> and the want so with all of these darn this darn rare disease collection like i'm pretty sure you racked up a whole bunch of like hospital bills so what helped you to really save money from that that's a brilliant question <laughs> i have over a million dollars in medical expenses and um my medical records, if you like stacked them on top of each other, they're over four feet high now. So that's a lot of medical records, doctors. And uh, in the beginning, I, I would go to the doctor. I wouldn't know how to communicate. So it took me a lot of doctors to get the proper diagnosis in the first place to then get the help I needed. But I also learned that um, doctors will send you bills before they even bill your insurance. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be responsible until I ran out of money <laughs> and, and I would send them a check for whatever it said. And you don't get that money back. They're like, thank you very much. And then I found out a few years into this process that your insurance company negotiates for you and they send you what they call an explanation of benefits, EOB, because that's hard to say. <laughs> and in that EOB, it tells you what your patient responsibility is. And when I started comparing my EOB to what the doctor's statement was, I realized I paid thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars that I didn't need to pay. So then I started going back tracking all the way to the beginning and looking at how much money I paid that I didn't need to pay. And now I say, read your EOBs. Also, if the number seems too high, check the spelling of your name, check your date of birth, check your account numbers. Any little mistake can cause them to pay a different amount on the bill. And then you have a higher bill. There's a, a thing called JCO in the United States that tells us how to run our hospitals and they keep track of billing errors and medical malpractice and errors that, that providers make. They say eight out of 10 bills has a mistake, eight out of 10. And that was about the average that I had in my medical bills when I went back through. 
Uh, I didn't get any of the money I paid <laughs> back, uh -huh. but I did going forward get fully out of debt and have all of my medical bills fully paid in full to date and, and have been able to um, build back up going from being on top of the world, having my dream job, being an entrepreneur, having a cheer and dance training company on top of that to food stamps, lost my house, lost my first marriage, literally went down to nothing and then have had to build back from there. All the things that I took for granted, I have have been building back and, and appreciate. But that was the biggest key was comparing those EOBs to the medical bill. And then when the doctor says I owe $100 and insurance says I owe $2.50, I take a picture or a photocopy of that bit of the EOB and send it to the doctor and say, here's your $2.50. I'm not paying any more than this. And then all of a sudden the bill's fixed. I don't know it anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. That was like the biggest thing in saving money was just fixing those medical billing errors. Yeah. And it's a shame that that is going on on top of everything else is going on too, because it was also some malpractice issues going on in your life before. So for those who may be curious after hearing this interview and they just want to get themselves checked out just to double check and make sure that they don't, have any rare diseases any advice for them going forward to get themselves checked out to make sure they don't have any rare diseases or if they do to take action and hopefully getting rid of it absolutely well one of the biggest tools in it and it actually within the last year and a half but really this past four to five months has has really changed my life was a test called um, pharmacogenomics and um, for short you can say pgx it, so um if you take this test, it tells you your medica any medications that are FDA approved and how you individually will do with those medications. So you don't, you know when doctors, you go to the doctor and you have something wrong and they can't figure it out? Well, that happened to me so many times. With this, they don't have to say, let's try this medication or see if this will work. Use your adjectives. Talk to the doctor. If you have pain, don't say I have pain everywhere. That's a mistake I made. Be specific. I have burning pain, shooting pain, cutting pain, searing pain, electrical pain, whatever type of pain you're going through, make sure you use adjectives to describe it. If you're having fevers that uh, cycle, go up and down, or uh, chronic vomiting, anything that is happening repetitively for especially within a three to six month period, you definitely want to get checked out and you definitely want to write down anything before you go to the doctor's office while you're at home and you're thinking about it in your environment, write down anything that you can think of. The more adjectives you give them, the more descriptions you can give them and the more data like your, your pulse rate or uh, if you have a thermometer, your temperatures, um, how, how they're fluctuating throughout the different parts of the day or with different activities. All those things help fill the doctor in with the data to give you precision medicine that helps you. And then if you have the ability to get a pharmacogenomics test, which really a lot of insurance companies are now paying for because they'd rather give you preventative care than wait till you have a chronic condition that's costing them millions of dollars. So if they can give you this pharmacogenomic test, a lot of times they will, and it's fully paid for, where it doesn't cost you anything out of pocket. And that can help you give you precise information about you and how you will respond to different medications that are available and uh, different treatment options and that type of thing. There's no more, let's try this. It's, this is what we're going to give you because based on your DNA, this is what works. Ah, uh, all right, cool. <laughs> PGX for sure. Definitely got to find that yes. link and put it in the show notes. And Dave, for those who want to get themselves. Yep. A great out. website is My Genetic Meds. That is one that I can remember. It's really easy. <laughs> but it's precision medicine and it's information that every person should have. And one day it will be part of the newborn screening. And, um, you know, we're, we're trying to get it into Newborn Screening Act that's been uh, in law for years but every so like every four to six years it has to get re-upped or refunded or that type of thing and we're trying to get 
uh, PGX testing into the newborn screening because that will stay with the baby for its entire life. You could have precision medicine from birth. It, wouldn't that be amazing? All, all of the environmental things. And the PGX test, it not only told me what medications, but it also helped me with what food. For instance, in March 1st this year, I weighed 144 pounds due to steroids and breathing medications and things that I was on. And um, I changed, based on the medications that I take, it said change these foods. I cut out two foods and I've lost 22 pounds already with zero exercise, just changing the foods. Wow. Right? I, that wow. is like that helps if you have diabetes or you're pre-diabetic that right there could stop you from ever having to get on diabetic medications or having something environmentally for type 2 diabetes environmentally uh caused it, it it could help reverse it or make it so that you never had it even if you had a predisposition to diabetes wow all righty well, but the, good but know. the foods that I stopped would not necessarily be the same foods for you. When you take the test, it will tell you what is appropriate for you. Oh yeah, definitely makes perfect. It's perfect sense indeed. It's kind of like the classic phrase that folks like to <laughs> really spout out the personal trains like, "Hey, six pack abs are made in the kitchen, y'all." <laughs> <laughs> I wish I don't have those back. <laughs> I don't have those back, but I am looking a lot better than I was three months ago. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it might be there, you know, it's just hiding behind skin material. No. <laughs> I have done zero stomach exercises since 2002. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> my six pack is gone. <laughs> All right, one pack ab revolution. All right, that's what I'm talking that's about. That's right, one pack here. <laughs> there you go. Forget the six pack abs. It's all about the whole keg. That's right. It, it, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But since this is far from your first rodeo, I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of questions that you've been asked. Is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often? Oh my goodness. Um, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, really, I, I don't get asked, like, what keeps you going? What helped you decide to keep going? And you asked that uh, during this, this chat. That's one that I don't get asked a lot. And I'm really happy that you did ask because I don't get asked that a lot. Um, Really, you know, I know people are listening right now and they're like, this lady is really a cheerleader because I'm just positive about everything. I want people to know that I do have times where I let myself cry and I let myself have this sadness of the loss that I've experienced or, or that, you know, something that I'm going through. It's not all happy, positive, but I try to face every negative situation with something positive or in a positive way, try to see the lesson in it or what I could do to overcome it. And instead of looking at it as a, as an issue, I look at it as a challenge. So, um, really, uh, you know, that, and one of the, the other things that, um, that I do is I don't accept other people's guilt. If I'm having a bad day or I wanted to do an event and I can't do it because of my health, I just take that guilt right off of me and I just drop it over there and say, yep, I don't need that. It's not mine. And I don't let somebody else guilt me for not being able to accomplish something that they think I should accomplish now when it might take me longer to accomplish it. So I don't know if that's a question, but that's an answer. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely take both. Definitely take both. Cause it's so darn true. And glad you mentioned the whole positivity thing, because I feel like that's one of the biggest things that people wonder about positive people it's like man every time i see you, you're so darn happy all the time it's like what are you smoking what are you drinking it's like nothing i'm human like you i just have a different mindset here <laughs> absolutely when when my mom passed away she was she was a um, colonel in the army and mm -hmm. which is a high rank and mm -hmm. she is buried at arlington national cemetery and at her funeral which was the not i was not happy she passed away 
but it was the best event I've ever attended in my life. This, the honors that our country gave my mom was amazing. What they did for her was amazing. And, but I had a woman come up to me and she said, and she was like, you know, it's okay to cry because God will catch your tears and collect them and make everything okay. And I was, it was I was happy that my mom was out of pain and with Jesus and living her best life. And she had never felt so good. I, I wasn't happy she was gone from our life. You know, you miss the, the people that leave us to go to heaven. Obviously they're good people. That's why they're in heaven. So <laughs> we miss them. We're here on earth still. We're going through the daily struggles of, of living in this realm, in this world. But I was happy for her that she had no more pain. She had a full, healthy being, and she was there with all the other people, all the other spirits, and with God, you know. And so I didn't have tears to cry. And so, you know, again, it's, I'm not always positive and happy, but I try to find the good in all the challenges that we face. Oh, yeah, that's right. Especially when it's good with 17 O's, it's good. <laughs> Amen. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, thanks so much for both your parents' service. My goodness, it's not every day you hear about a lady colonel. So, my goodness. Right? <laughs> like, that's freaking amazing. Like, yeah. And man. she would tell all her army buddies and everything. I'm having this when I pass away and I'm having that. And they were all like, you ain't getting none of that. They're not doing none of that. She had a marching band, a choir, a, a cannon salute, a 21 gun salute. Um, they folded her flag at, at Arlington National Cemetery. When you pass away, they fold your flag and they present it to the, to the head of the family and the next the head. And um, they made them refold the flag six times before it was presentable to our family. Like, that, it was like, all right, I'll take one. They did it six times. You know, it, it, it just was breathtaking. All the things, she had a riderless horse and a she had a parade through Arlington National Cemetery from, from the main place that you always see on TV where the presidents always go and put the wreath. From that main building all the way to her grave site, they had a parade for her. Amazing what they did there. Amazing. That's what I'm <laughs> sorry. talking about. Oh, no, ain't no sorry for that. My goodness, that's freaking awesome. Like, I'm glad she got that send off because it's well deserved. Definitely well deserved. And it's extra exciting because, um, funny enough, um, oh, I need to stop saying that. Um, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, we actually had a wonderful guest by the name of Shannon Huffman Polson, and she has a book called The Grit Factor, where she interviewed a bunch of ladies who served in the military. And I was like, wow, like, man, that would have been one heck of a wealth of stories. So, are there any three big lessons from your mom that stood out to you that is responsible for your success today? The biggest one was that she took care of four kids uh, full time. She was a colonel in the army. She was the um, head of the or said president of the Virginia Nursing Association. She had a doctorate in nursing. <laughs> she could do so many things. And she taught me how to actually multitask and to do all the things that I can do despite living with all of the challenges that I've lived with. So that's the biggest thing that my mom taught me. So, and I get my positivity from my dad. That's the biggest thing for my mom. And then she taught me time management, but not in the traditional sense. She was always late <laughs> to, to things, which you can't be when, you, when you're military. They'll be like, she's AWOL. She's not AWOL, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but when you're late, you're left and you miss out on the opportunities. So she taught me to be early. And she also taught me to tell her that things started a half an hour before they started so that I would never be late. <laughs> 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 and the third thing she taught me was hair grows back <laughs> so she ne like 25 years of my life she never cut her hair and uh, she wouldn't trim it she kept her hair long and when she would go to service she would braid it and like put it under her her hat and everything and like pin it up and um and I took her on a reality show 
and said, my mom's never cut her hair. And they gave her a full makeover and she looked so beautiful. We actually used that picture at her funeral. Oh, um, <laughs> nice. But we, we got her hair looking like perfect. She looked so beautiful. And she immediately grew it all back out for the rest of her life. <laughs> so she taught me hair grows back. You can cry and be sad that, that your hair grow, you know, gets cut. Or for me, I went through three years of radiation. So I had like patches of hair falling out. And now my hair is thicker than ever and coming back full. And I have lots of baby hairs that are coming in. So hair grows back. There's three life lessons, not probably the normal life lessons, but three things that she taught me. Ah, there you go. That's right, folks. Hair grows back. There's still hope. If you're bald, hair grows back, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if it doesn't, there's wigs and weaves and all kinds of other things that you can do with your hair to, you know, make it. My hair is naturally kinky and curly. I straighten it. You could do many different things with your hair. Don't have to be one way all the time. That's what you're born with. That's what you get. You can change it up. How how about that? That's a better life lesson. <laughs> uh, there you go. That's part two of the third part of the three life lessons. Yes. Here we go. <laughs> That's right. Oh, no. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with oh, no. It's oh, yeah. That's right. It's like oh, the Kool-Aid yeah. man. That's right. That's right. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it's kind of funny. It's like she was a colonel, but showed up late to things. I guess that's probably from having the four kids, maybe. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the thing. She she was the colonel. She ran the Nurses Association for the state of Virginia. She served on President George Bush Sr.'s HIV AIDS Council. She t had four kids. We were all in Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts. We church choir. My brother was the altar boy. We did track, soccer, uh, baseball. My brothers did baseball, um, cheerleading, dance, multiple types of dance. And we had so many events to go to that she was always running late because there's four kids plus herself and all of her own personal life goals to accomplish that she needed to get done and to fulfill her purpose here. And so it, it was a lot. Yeah. And so that's why I was... If, if it starts at 6, I had to be there at 5.30. Because <laughs> that means I would get there at like 2 minutes to 6. <laughs> oh, man. Well, speaking of magical numbers are coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive. And that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but this time in 2021 with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? Don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> Don't have anxiety. Give it up. Give it to God. He will take care of you. He will provide. When, when I was at my lowest, I lost everything. I never lost a roof over my head. I always had food. There, it was always there. I always had clothes to put on. And he will provide for you. Let him take care of that. Don't have anxiety over it. Boom. Boom. <laughs> there you go folks there you go that's what i'm talking about indeed magical mic drop from miss congeniality herself miss resilient human spirit personified baby that's what i'm talking about Aww. yes indeed yes indeed so for those who want to engage and learn more about the wonderful radiance you have more about the ipf the international pain foundation all the wonderful stuff you're doing what's the best way for folks to reach out to you the best way for anything related to chronic pain or rare disease is internationalpain.org. Go to that website. There's a contact us form at the bottom of every single page, and you can just fill in your information, let us know what your questions are, and we will get back to you. We have a mentor program. We have all kinds of resources, and we work with over 150 different diseases, not just the ones that I have. So if you want to find out more about me or any projects that I'm working on personally, Outside of the foundation, you can go to barbieingle.com. Not very original, just my name, barbieingle.com. But you can find out all about me there and also see my books and any information you want about any uh, upcoming media appearances or past appearances that I've done. 
Boo-hoo. <laughs> well, there you have it from Madam President herself. Go out there, check out both websites, learn some stuff, buy all of the copies of her books. Buy 77 copies each of her seven books. Share with your friends, your family, your cat, your penguin, your camel, your horse. Heck, even share it with a parrot if you can find one. Oh, yeah, share with the doctors, too. You know what? Share it with the parrot who's also a doctor, like, especially if it's Polly. Yeah. That's right, Polly wants Barbie's book. There we go. Yeah, forget crackers. It's about Barbie's book. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not about crackers. It's about books. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! So, any parting words before we close up shop, Barbie? Know that hope is true. There is hope. There is help, and hope is true. How's it going, you super special, awesome human? Since you made it to the end of this episode, it looks like you really enjoyed yourself. Since you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with at least three people in your network and tell them what you really liked about this episode. Heck, even shoot myself or the guests an email and let them know what you like most about this interview so that way they can stay inspired to keep pushing out great work.